Bonjour mes amis, hi guys. Collection review time, and uh, I'm gonna keep the name anonymous. I'll call him RM. His initials, he's from Singapore, and he's 29, so let's call him RM29. That's the new Richard Mill model for you. Now, RM has been collecting for a while. His dad bought him a couple of Seikos and then a tag uh, Aqua Racer. And when he met his wife, he had a Seiko Solar on. And so he's got some sentimental pieces and then he acquired some very cool pieces as you will see and as you can see right now on the screen. And he's asking my advice about where to go to celebrate in November, like me, his uh, 38th birthday, not like me. All right, so the core of the collection, I think for me, the three heavy hitters are right here on the screen. It's got a five digit Rolex Digest, which looks perfect, perfect on him. And also he's clearly a photograph enthusiast. So we're gonna see some really good pictures, much better than you see usually on the Uptick Watch Reviews channel. Then he's got the Z-Blue, same as me. Very beautiful watch, wind and wear. It's sport, a sports watch, but great for someone like him who works in the scientific field because it's got great resistance to magnetic fields and it's got the black black omega seamaster no wave i really love this watch it looks great on him now besides that he's got the uh, tag aqua racer as i mentioned that his dad got him uh you know it wouldn't be my my first choice but i think it looks great on him and he takes actually great pictures uh, of it and he dresses it up with straps and really uh, looks cool so sentimental piece never of course sell a sentimental piece he's got the marine master i have one as well it's one of those watches that make a watch enthusiast a true watch enthusiast open to other things smile i love mine uh, even if it's a uh, half a lump <laughs> to wear uh, it's actually it doesn't wear that big on the on the wrist because of the very short lugs and then he's got the, the old steel uh, Casio G-Shock there to model on or to uh, defend himself in a fight that's perfect. You put that on your wrist and it's a weapon. Now, beyond that, he bought a whole bunch of things like we all do, you know, a lot of uh, Seikos, the, the Paddy versions, uh, different types of uh, divers. A few, uh, a few dodgy uh, pieces as well, as you can see here in the scrolling uh, picture but hey i can't blame him i've done the the, the, the same alpina some brands i don't even know there's uh ooh, there's certainly one that was inspired by a certain rodent uh, clearly he there the the squally you know the squally of today is not the squally that uh, made squally the squally name so honestly i have no affinity for that watch uh, I much prefer the, the Seikos. I actually have the same bracelet for the Alpinist. You know, he lives in Singapore, I live in Hong Kong. We get access to, the, to those bracelets easily. Uh, I, I've tried it on once and I never wore it, of course. Uh, the, I like the Seiko on the top right here. And uh, the swatch, actually, I had the, that exact swatch in my hands and considered it. It's an enthusiast look. Uh, of course, Flieger uh, Type B, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, so I mentioned that our friend RM29 is a wonderful photograph enthusiast. Look at these pictures. And if you're wondering what that beautiful all white OP is, it's him giving back to his dad, thanking him uh, for buying him uh, his first watches. And he bought that for his, his dad. I think it looks amazing, beautiful watch. And uh, look at the other pictures here how he put them in context with uh, his clothes, uh, with some, uh, with an old uh, typewriter there. And uh, even the, the Casio looks, uh, looks really cool. Right, so our friend here has an eye for beauty, seems to be treating his watches with care and passion, works to afford them and hasn't made any crazy silly purchases. The main three pieces are really uh, classics and you can't take away from them with the new iterations from the, the same uh, line of watches. But the first thing I would do is uh, get a, a smaller box for five or six pieces to uh, unclutter uh, your, your vision there. 
you see I keep my watches in separate boxes I put the Seiko's uh, away I even keep them in separate locations because I just want to see the, the best stuff together to be able to visualize where to go next as uh, a collection brings a lot of pleasure and peace of mind when it forms a harmonious ensemble you know in terms of the complications the colors the the, the shapes that's the way i like to uh, to look at my watches and finally i would uh, share the love of watches uh, with nephews cousins kids uh, give away some of the entry level pieces i think they're gonna drag you down in your journey now you showed me uh, four current watches that uh, you're considering i think all of them are quite emblematic of the of the brands uh, the snowflake you know also set in history uh, as emblematic for for grand seiko uh, which keeps on bringing little iterations but that one you know i used to have it as solid and i kind of miss uh, that uh, peaceful effect it has on, on you it's very cool spring drive something very different titanium too not a bad not a bad idea you know i've scratched that itch if you need to do it uh, you, you can do it. However, maybe I'll go for, you know, I'll look for something a bit nicer for your 30th birthday. The, the PAM 372, again, simple, emblematic. Uh, you know, PAM has so many models though. Uh, Cartier, a bit difficult because Cartier keeps on bringing more and more uh, watches, but uh, I like the, the, the Santos very much. Not sure it really brings something uh, if you already have um, a two-tone they just I'd prefer the, the larger size a bit sportier but uh, you know maybe you like the, the smaller size um, it's a good watch for ho Singapore's hot weather and you can be caught in a downpour with it uh, it's all right and the uh, Glashutter original uh, it, it's a bit risky because of the looming presence of uh, longer to which eventually I think you will be able to uh, graduate so if you spend say seven ten grand in a in a geo it's seven ten grand you're not keeping in the in, in the kitty to uh, purchase the the longer down the line so see i don't want you to settle for anything here uh something that could be supplanted eventually by something else uh, now you mentioned you want to buy at the ad you know careful because uh as you know 40% to half of the retail price is the watch's true value, especially in those brands. Above that, you pay for distribution, the, the store location, the salaries of the salespeople, and you're making someone else rich. We want to try to make you rich. So if you love any of those four watches, try to buy them secondhand, maybe on Carousel. I know you have that in Singapore as well. Uh, and try to buy from a good seller in, uh, in top condition. So however, if I was you, I would get none of these. Um, it's easy for me to say, you know, I've had a snowflake and all that. It's out of my system. But what I would add right now for your 30th birthday is a complication. So yes, the GO, the Glashutter original brings a nice complication, but you don't want to pay retail or even 20% off for that particular model. Also, while GO is the actual legal continuity to the original longer, maybe it doesn't say 30th birthday enough. So perhaps do consider going one step up, one big step up to the longer 1815 up down, for example, or, or longer one. I know it's a, it's a different bracket, but you know, I think it's, uh, it's worth it. Having said that, uh, Geo has one model that ticks all the boxes, I think. It's squared, you know, a bit like the, the Cartier, it's got several complications, including a flyback chronograph, a big date, a power reserve, and now it's got amazing colors. It's got Loom, it's on an integrated steel bracelet, but doesn't look like a Royal Oak knockoff. It's got an adjustable clasp, I believe, and the movement is something nice to look at and enjoy. And finally, finally it won't be on everyone else's wrist. It is the Glashutter original, 70s chronograph panorama date it's sporty modern and retro at the same time has unique complications and it wears easy uh, as fate would have it uh when i was preparing this uh last week just a couple of days ago tim musso opened his uh sunday night show i believe uh with this watch so if he's got the uh 
Team Muscle stamp of approval, I feel I feel quite a lot better uh, for having thought about that watch um, when I was preparing the, the review here. So there you go. I rest my case, Your Honor. Uh, this is the one uh, for you to, to consider. Uh, but it's going to be a keeper because residual value, at least for now, uh, on these will be lower than for a Rolex. I like it because you won't be told you have a baby longer, even if, if I think it's a stretch to call Glashut Original uh, a baby longer. Uh, I think they, they, they make beautiful watches. I just don't like watches that need justification because eventually you grow tired of explaining. When people see your watch, they must think, hmm, why didn't I think of that? Having said all this, let me bore you with more standard suggestions because the geo is quite polarizing, which is another way to say interesting. Since you mentioned PAM, you could consider the GMT versions that would add a cool complication. Consider the uh, eight day power reserve PAM 233 or the green 998, for example. I think you could make those look beautiful on your, on your pictures. Uh, the Zenit A384 uh, on the Gay Frere bracelet is, uh, is something you could appreciate, but Zenit is on a roll now. They pump out tons of colorways, so it's becoming unbecoming. And the residual value is in the toilet, so buy at half retail or not at all. Now, Omega, Omega Speedy. I think the old case style, uh, like the uh, first Omega in space would be, would be nice. You would have two roll eyes and two omegi. And how about the CK2998? That's one of my favorites in black with the precision scale or in blue with the classic tachymeter scale. Uh, those look really cool. And then lately I added to my collection the Tudor 79280. And there's quite a lot of colors. So you might find one that you like and uh, it's a collectible already. And in terms of shape, you know, we mentioned Cartier, we mentioned Geo. Uh, GLC Reverso, night day, get a rubber lined uh, strap for it and uh, try to find a, or maybe try to find a Grand Sport like I just did. Uh, it's a very specific model and maybe I'm the only one to really appreciate it. Uh, but Reverso, yeah, that could be, that could be nice as well. I think, uh, yeah, you, you'd put it off really nice in a large or, or, or medium size. Uh, now, if your business gets really successful and you get a big payout, you know, then you go Patek. Perpetual 5320. Boom. <laughs> it references a rare version of the uh, early Perpetual calendars. Has a cool vibe, superb case, modern build. You know, fantastic. Uh, one step down, but equally referencing iconic looks uh, is a certain version of the 5396. You know, once you appreciate this uh, kind of layout on the Patek, I think nothing else will really do. And for something totally unique, the 5235G can still have it for a pretty good price. You know, that one is game over. Or you could have a, a great one watch with the 5960, you know, fly by chronograph, annual calendar, cool looks. I just mentioned these just to put some perspective uh, to the sub $10,000 bracket that we are looking at so far. Uh, you know, there's a next echelon and maybe it's worth saving and stretching so that you don't end up wanting one and having to part with many watches and lose some money in the process. I think in the long term, those will uh, hold up. Then, of course, we have to think Rolex, maybe a semi-vintage Rolex GMT Master 2 16710, uh, a Coke uh, color, for example, uh, would say happy birthday with a bang. You know, it allows you to dip your toes easy by uh, getting a mid 2000s model that is still very usable like a modern piece and of course there's the Tudor Black Bay GMT but I think you can reach higher than that uh, and if any AD wants to help you celebrate the milestone you know definitely get a root beer that would be a no-brainer addition so you know do ask ADs you never know um, I wouldn't really add any other watch under $5,000 at this point that's for sure so there you go. Honestly, I think that uh, Geo 70s Chronograph has your name on it. If your AD can give you 30% off, I think you'd have something different and competent. I'd look for it on the second hand and, uh, and gray market though. Uh, you have a few months to find the one and I hope it works out. So guys, let me know what you think about my advice here. Any other watches 
you would advise uh, getting uh, to our friends RM RM29. I hope you like your your nickname. Uh, put that in the in the comments. And uh, if you want me to review uh, your watch collection and I give you an advice, I try to do it as fast as possible. Sometimes I don't have access to a quiet room in my uh, busy, busy schedule. Uh, send me your, your email to uh, upticwr at uh, gmail.com. Thanks for watching. Bye bye, guys.